All right, let's look at the second question of the 2022 AP Physics 2 for your response. As usual, if there's any corrections, I'll put them in the pinned comment below. So students perform an experiment with a battery and four resistors, A, B, C, and D. The resistance of the resistors A and C is R, A equals R, C. So these are two, so I'm just gonna call these R. This is R, this is R. The resistors B is R, B, and this is 2 R, this is 2 R. The students create two circuits shown and measure the potential differences delta VA, delta VB, delta VC, delta VD across resistors A, B, C, and D. From greatest to least, rank the magnitude of the potential differences across the resistor. Use one for the greatest magnitude, use two for the next greatest magnitude, and so on. If any potential differences have the same magnitude, just use the same number for their ranking. Okay, these guys are parallel with the voltage, so they each of these resistors see the entire voltage drop across the resistors, so those are one and they're both the same. It doesn't matter that the resistors are the same. Um, so then the next is these two guys are in series, right? So the same current flows through them. Neither of them see the full voltage battery, so they're definitely smaller than these two. But um, who has the biggest drop is the V equals IR. They have the same current, right? But um, you know, like this guy's gonna have a greater drop because of the bigger R. So bigger R, same I, it's gonna have a higher voltage drop. So that means D is next, and then v, delta VC is next. Um, use the same number for, I think it's okay to do this. If you put like three and then four because you thought they were the same, I think that would be okay. As long as you kind of have the order correct, it's probably fine. And my justification is that VA and VB are parallel, parallel with the battery. So they see the they see the full see the full uh, battery voltage. And then um, V uh, sorry this is R A I should say R A and R B, R C and R D have the same current, but um, you know V of D so since V is equal to I R right, and RD is greater than RC, that implies that VD is greater than VD, VC. That's it, I didn't put the deltas, but that's fine. In another experiment, students have a capacitor with known capacitance CU. They want to determine CU by using a battery of potential difference 4.5 volts and several other capacitors of known capacitance. They create circuits with the battery and unknown capacitor and one of the capacitors of known capacitance. The students wait until the capacitors are fully charged and then record the potential difference delta V known across the known capacitor and the potential difference delta V across the unknown capacitor. The data is shown in the following table. So, okay, I wanna double check this. I wanna draw a circuit. They wanna determine C by using a battery of potential. So this is a 4.5 volts. And uh, calculate the charge of the student. Oh, yeah. Are they in series or not? What, what's this? I wish they do a picture for this. Uh, several capacitors, they create circuits with the battery of the unknown capacitor in one. The students wait until the capacitor is fully charged and record the potential difference delta V known across the battery capacitor and delta VU. They, did, they, they didn't really say. Calculate the amount of charge in the capacitor of the known capacitor of 200 microfarads in the student's experiments. Okay, so the known capacitor. So, um, okay, fine. Uh, Q, let's see, known. Of, no, of the 200, 200 microfarads. Okay, never mind. They, they wanted just this one. Uh, well, that's just Q equals CV. And so the capacitance is 200 times 10 to the minus 6 farads times the voltage. And the, the voltage across that capacitor is 0 0.91. Okay, so 200 times 0.91. It's um, 182. And then, I don't know, I'll just make it microcoulombs. You could say times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, but I'm just microcoulombs. Briefly explain what the data in the table provides evidence that capacitors are connected in series. Why are they connected in series? Because if you add these two voltages, they're probably the same. Um, and that's what it would mean to be for capacitors to be in series. Yeah. Um, the total voltage, and I would say delta V known plus delta VU is about constant. It's not exactly constant, but like close enough within, within the, it's about the same, about the same. We'll just say about the same. 
Briefly explain why connected capacitors in parallel would not provide enough information to determine the capacitance of the unknown capacitor if the only measuring device available is the voltmeter. Um, because um, both capacitors would always, if I put them in parallel, so if I put this in parallel like this, they would just uh, they would just reach the same charge. They they would always reach the same voltage, and then like and then reach the same charge. Or not, not the same charge. They would always reach the same voltage. So it doesn't really matter if you vary the known one. It wouldn't affect the charge on that guy. Would always have the same voltage. So there would be no difference. Be no difference when changing the capacitances. That's what I'm gonna put. I mean, there's there's a, probably a lot of ways to answer this one. Capacitances. Um, because all you would know is the voltage, and knowing the voltage across it is not a sufficient, right? Like since nothing else varies, all you would know is the voltage across that capacitor, but then that doesn't really tell you anything um, because the other capacitor is gonna have the same voltage, so. Students want to produce a linear graph of the data so the capacitance CU of the unknown capacitor can be determined from the slope of the best fit line for the data. Indicate two quantities that could be plotted to produce the desired graph. Use the empty columns in the data table to record any values you need to calculate. Okay, so if you if you have a battery here, right, and you have you know you have your known capacitance, oops, I should put two capacitors. What's constant between them? And CU. What's constant is that um they'll have the same charge. If I induce a positive Q here, you'll get a negative Q, you'll get a positive Q, you'll get a negative Q. They'll have the same Q on both capacitors, right? And so you would just know that Q is equal to C known times delta V known, which is equal to Cu times delta Vu. And I would like this guy to be the slope Right, so that makes what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this my x, and we'll make this quantity my y. So y equals mx. So the vertical axis will be c known times delta v known, and horizontal axis will be delta um, vu. Those are the variables they call them, right? Delta VU and yeah, yeah. Um, you could honestly have divided that to the other side and made that the slope. You could also have done Y and X and then the slope would be, you know, the reciprocal, right? Like just be careful, but this is probably the most direct way to do it. Label the axis, provide open scale, appropriate scale with the units, plot the data points for the quantities, draw best fit line. For simplicity, uh, rather than me scrolling back and forth, I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a picture of this. Put it here so I can create the table of values to use in here. So I want to plot here the um, C known, delta V known, right? That's why they add those in. So I'm going to do 200 times um, 0.91. And these will be in, uh, I guess it's going to be microcoulombs, microcoulombs. So that's going to be 182. Then 300 times 0.65 is 195. Then 400 times 0.51 is 204. Then 500 times 0.42 is 210. And then 600 times 0.36 is 216. So what am I gonna do on the X axis? I'm gonna be delta VU. And I wanna put that, I wanna put the units, don't make sure you put units. And then this axis is gonna be C known, delta V known, or you could just call it Q and that's measured in microcoulombs, right? So this is gonna be my y-axis, gonna be my x-axis. Let's go ahead and we're going from 3.5, we'll make this 3.5, and we wanna go up to about 4.2, so what do we got, one, two, three, four, maybe you can half a volt, no, the half a volt's too much. Um, let's make it two five, so like every two of them is um, half a volt, 4.0, then 4.5, is that, uh, that still seems kind of narrow. Um, we'll make each big thing like 0.2 maybe, we'll just make them 0.1, let me count it. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 
yeah, let will just make up each point one. So this would be 3.5, 3.7, 3.9, 3 then 4.1. So each hash mark's gonna be about 0.1 volts, 4.3. Um, I don't know, that, that's fine. And then on the vertical axis, uh, I need to go about from 180 to 220. So I'll make this 180 here, and we'll make each one like 10. One, or each two is 10, so 190, 200, 210, 220, something like that, right? That'll be a good range for that. Okay, first value is 3.53. So this is 3.6, 3.53 is about there, 182, uh, about, I don't know, about there. And then, then uh, 3.74, that's about there. And then 195 is gonna be right like right there. And then 3.95, it's halfway, and then 204. This is 205, so right below it, 204 there. And then 4.06 and 210, 4. Uh, 4, this is 4.0, 4 4.06 and 210. And then 4.17, that's about there, and 216. Let's hope I didn't do a terrible job. It looks pretty linear, so I don't think I did a terrible job with that. Okay, that's a pretty good line, but I'm gonna make a slight adjustment on this end. I shouldn't have to be too perfect on that. Uh, you guys just need to be, you know, just kind of get a process. It's not really. Important they get super exact. I'm just being a little picky right now on that. Okay, use your best fit line. And so the slope of this should give me the capacitance directly. So let's just pick that point. And then I always pick something that's like, you know, easy to read somewhere on the graph. We'll just pick like um, this one right here. All right, so let's continue the axes. This is 4.5, this is 4.7. So this guy out here, he's gonna be like 4.5, no, 4.6, 4.65, 4.65 comma, oh geez, uh, 230, 240. And then this guy here is about 3.5 comma 180, right? That's kind of what I, and let's just continue the axis, 230, 240, just so I'm, okay, so the slope, oops, the slope uh, is going to be 240 minus 180, over 4.65 minus 3.5. Okay, and then divided by um, 4.65 minus 3.5. Got 52.2, and that would be in microfarads because it was a microcoulombs per volt, so microfarads. So 50, sorry, let me just make that 52.2 microfarads.